Okay, hello guys, uh, hi all. I'm going to make a short presentation on uh, DeepFake with DeepFake Face Lab. It's a Python script which is uh, running uh, on uh, separate environments. It's it's actually and the idea of the of the the software is uh, to swap faces in uh, videos. It could be done in real time. It could be uh, done with uh, over the desktop machine, and it's using machine learning and uh, different uh, kind of Python scripts in order to extract and train models, which are going to be used after that for the the particular face swap. And um, this technology is actually quite cool. You can accomplish uh, really good stuff. And what 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 I'm going to to start with is uh, with a short agenda. What the fake is, which is which I'm actually doing at the moment. Uh, why the fake could be a problem? This is just a short question because uh, it could be a problem. Some public examples and of course some examples with the open source software because I'm all of the software I'm using is open source. And um, you can I will jump into some small uh, pieces of other um, of Say presentations as well in order to, to show you uh, the most of it because there is a lot of information about this. This is very popular over the internet. It's popular over the, the deep networks as well, and uh, it, it could be really fun if you if you can uh, make uh, some videos with uh, your let's say dog or pet or whatever. It could make uh, some magic. So what what actually uh, deep fake is understood is generally a video which is uh, face has been swapped with another person. This is of course uh, the simplest explanation, and uh, it, it could be actually face swapping not only faces. It could uh, face swap wherever you train it. This is uh, the most uh, I would say valuable thing in, in uh, this kind of software because you can. Can train it to, to swap not only faces but uh, items as well. You can uh, actually make it real time, which is really, really I'd say impressive at this point. Uh, deep fake history is uh, not so how to say uh, it's popular over the, the past few years because uh, the technology stack is uh, actually making it possible. Uh, it's uh, it started since June 2016, and uh, there are a lot of papers over the internet about face swapping and uh, some fake news for um, some popular, uh, how to say, people and uh, people which are uh, making uh, crazy dances and uh, making them look stupid. After that, it actually started uh, with. Uh, it was banned for some uh, in some countries as well uh, because uh, it's uh, branching their uh, government uh, rules. So uh, and uh, till then, Mark Zuckerberg, uh, <laughs> the fake release. This is just uh, um, information which uh, got over the internet and Facebook that uh, Mark Zuckerberg is uh, making some funny dancing videos and he's swapping himself. Well, they are making some software about this, but uh, it's not released yet. So this is not so, uh, how to say, not not so visible at the moment. But uh, the fact that uh, everybody is uh, curious about the video and uh, how they can swap faces is uh, just impressive. So, deepfake detection methodologies are actually uh, five or six main ones. Uh, they are, uh, they are, the first one is signal level, which is actually uh, gathering the info from the encoder and, uh, and making a train model, which is uh, checking the, the JPEG compression and interpretation behind it, it's actually uh, looking at the code of the JPEG itself. And uh, this, this way trains these models. And after that, it, it uses them to switch 
output another JPEG, for example. Uh, the physical level, of course, the whitening conditions of the videos and the JPEGs, the shadows, the reflections, stuff like this. This should, this is actually handled in the software I'm going to show you. It's handled by machine learning. The semantic level is actually, actually the consistency of the metadata gathered in the in the past two steps and after that it's actually changing the physiological uh, it's gathering as well physiological signals like breathing pose eye blink eye blinking uh, for example uh, it's um, making um, in individualized uh, how to say model which uh, is is used in order to to compare the, the both persons and of course video authentication is uh, like this is when we we can use uh, a network for example gathering all our models and uh, this way we can um, make more uh, accurate and uh, more i would say more better uh, quality of the swap after that because uh, the more data we have uh, about the model which we are going to swap is uh, actually making the things more uh, more and more uh, how to say easy after that and because of that we can use blockchain technology for example and machine learning as well with python so how is the process uh, actually, there is an input sequence, there is a network future factor, and uh, the decryptor, these are the steps I described in the past screen. Uh, the detection network, which is actually using the, the network and the models before that, and, sorry, I cannot read this. Pristine and deep fake. This is uh, deep fake is just uh, how to say a word for for the technology stack itself. So there is a there is a definition. This is the overview of the project. Uh, there is a source person, which could be me or which, which which could be everything. There is a destination person who should be swapped, and um, in in order to accomplish this, we should. Uh, First, uh, of course, this is uh, for the for the second screen actually, for the next screen actually. Uh, this is going to make a, a clear workspace. Uh, it's going to extract images from one video, cut the video, extract images to the destination video, and of course, uh, uh, extract the swapped faces video. After that, Oops, sorry, can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Okay, so here is, uh, for example, one software which is creating videos. I'm just going to show you the software. It's open source. Uh, so there is an input here. We can put some video here. Uh, there is output here, of course. Alignments are files with uh, the models itself. I will show you some if you like. So here are some extracted, for example, images with model data. Here you can see the red dots are actually creating uh, a defect model for the person. Here is another example.
here you can see that actually the software uses a, a different kind of uh, source videos, for example, to create a model. This could be done as well. Okay, so this is actually a workflow I created uh, on, on events. And actually this is the model itself, the uh, binary code. And uh, now I'm going to show you a video when uh, I created previously. I'm sorry about the examples. I'm a little bit, how to say, frustrated because I want to show more things, but I don't have time to prepare the presentation. So this is the decorator, which is creating the model for that girl. And now I put this girl in office, for example. Here is the ready video. Originally, the body is not hers. So how is this possible with the software in the Python? Here is uh, one uh, library, which is uh, DeepFace, DeepFace Lab. You can find it over GitHub as well. I will um, actually put all the links I'm using in the presentation as well. So, what, what actually uh, this software is doing is uh, following the steps which I mentioned before. Uh, it's actually uh, creating a, a software or a desktop software, it doesn't matter. Uh, there is a code lab as well, I will share it after that, when, where I put all the things together uh, in Google host service. So in, in general, uh, here uh, there is a menu about this, uh, this software and you can find getting started guide, for example, for the process here. I will show you the, the, the getting started page, just a second. Okay, so here is a short introduction, of course, uh, getting started, uh, information and stuff like this. But, uh, for example, the process and the command line is, uh, is here. As you can see, it's using uh, Python as a source. And, of course, this one is the GUI version, which I'm showing. There is a, uh, how to say, main, the main functions of the software are to, to train models and uh, to create uh, different kind of sources and after that uh, you can create as many videos as you like with uh, these models, for example. So this is why the, the first uh, thing you have to do is uh, extract data from uh, the source faces. And uh, these are the command lines which are doing this. Of course, in the GUI there is a place for this. and. Um, Actually, uh, it's, it's gathering uh, around uh, 5,000 uh, 5, uh, faces or images on each person because uh, when, when you can see every person has um, 
I believe, 120 uh, points in the phase where where they can uh, show uh, his attraction and his uh, attitude at the moment. And these all models are gathered over machine learning and Python. Uh, you can see here in the code lab, for example, you can see some code snippets which I created. I will put this link uh, in the presentation as well. And uh, you can see that uh, uh, here with Python, you can actually uh, create a, a model of, um, of uh, let's say, video camera. Let, let's, uh, let's switch to, to different kind of videos and create five, 500,000 uh, different kind of models for one camera, for example. And after that, uh, you can uh, swap it with, uh, with whatever you like in videos or you can stream it as well. So with uh, deepfake in general, let's get back to, to, to the software. Uh, there is a training model, of course, which I explained already. Uh, the full example here is using Trump, for, uh, which uh, I don't believe we're going to use today, but we can use it next time. So what actually is uh, is doing is uh, it's training, uh, it's making folders in your local machine with all the, the images, and it's uh, inputting. Uh, you can input um, a model which could train over two different kind of sources. This is again possible, and uh, after that. When you create the model, you should uh, actually um, create a this. You should choose a destination video, and it will be uh, taking taking you to to a place where you can uh, find a different kind of, uh, of algorithms in order to to accomplish the the deep fake. I'll say the deep fake um, scenario. So here you can actually configure some tra trainings. You can make uh, some masks as well. You can make some blur masks as well. Uh, I will put uh, example videos like I have 20 or something like this in uh, YouTube and I'll put them in the presentation as well. So you can watch them after that. And uh, the model itself uh, could be, uh, it has many different kind of uh, of adapted adapters, uh, it could uh, it could actually reflect or uh, it could filter some uh, daylight uh, lighting, some uh, face, um, I'd say mirroring or something like this. If there is something in the video which uh, you can filter it, you can do it with the trainer model. Uh, after that, you can actually uh, create some settings for zooming of the models. Uh, the model itself is actually the image of the face. Let's say it like this. This is the, easy the easiest explanation. And uh, here you can make some, some settings about that uh, preview and that exploitation. After that, you can uh, actually uh, create some convert settings where you can again put some masks, for example, uh, some scaling, if you like, some manual balance of the hue, saturation, brightness, contrast, and stuff like this. And uh, after that, you can actually extract it, of course, to a local folder or wherever you like. So in general, here we can see some of the steps predefined. Uh, there are some code snippets, like for example, camera capture or cross output communication. Uh, there are many uh, examples here because I, I have played a lot of with them. You will be able to see it after that. I don't want to dive into all the, the different kind of snippets. 
But uh, here in file section, for example, if you want to dive into a little bit in the development, uh, there is a virtual machine, of course, uh, which has folder content, for example. These are the, the Python scripts. Here is the main PI. Here are the models. There is some doc documentation as well in the repository. The workspace is itself and the most uh, important thing is actually here you have uh, a two folders which are quite important. The sample data, of course, uh, where uh, the models are stored. For example, here is one, I will open it. So this is, let's say, hash data with the model itself. And uh, here actually you can try a, a different kind of uh, parts of the software. For example, you can try to clone the repository, and put everything there. We can uh, manage workspaces. We can make extract sorting. And of course, the conversion itself. These are the main scripts. And you can use the code snippets as well. So I will show you what is doing and the software is doing actually here. There is a website. Face swap dev, where you can find an executable installation file for Windows, for example. They have a, a YouTube channel as well. And I will show you what the example they did. Here is one example of the ex extracted model, for example, Harrison Ford. These are all the model photos which the software created. Here in their community, wait, let me, let me show you this.
here is an example video of, of the software. Okay, so this was the, the promo video of the software. Uh, and actually what I was planning now is to, to talk about a little bit for uh, why defect would be a problem uh, in general. And uh, maybe you can share some experience or you can ask some questions here. Uh, for me, defect, could be a problem because uh, it can make a commercial uh, reflect on uh, places where uh, people are gathering information and it could be some important information which is touching their lives, for example, political or whatever. So for me, this is a problem uh, as far as it's used for, uh, how to say, for bad, uh, for bad ideas and uh, to, to damage people. Uh, otherwise, it's really fun. It's using uh, a full stack of technology, like for example, 
uh, Python and machine learning. Uh, it's not easy to, to run it over a local machine for now, but uh, the things are getting, I would say, very, very progressively good uh, at, at this point. And um, basically, that was uh, that was my main, I would say, streamline for the presentation. I can uh, go deeper in, uh, in the software uh, as well as in the videos. And I, I can create more examples if you are interested, of course. Uh, but, but for now, uh, I believe we, we can uh, actually go to the questions part and uh, discuss a little bit uh, if deepfake for you is a problem uh, and should we do some offensive, uh, I would say, development or should we think for the future in order to, to make uh, some security requirement you know, uh, for the videos itself. Guys, are you here? Yes, we are. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. Thank you, Alessa, for this presentation. I have a question a little bit like I didn't um, actually hear. Uh, it's maybe not about the problems that uh, can be caused by defects, because uh, there's a lot. But um, I'm more interested in um, knowing how much data you need to actually train the model. So how much, how many photos of a person need to, to make this uh, um, like uh, realistic? Hello? I'm sorry, I'm back. Yeah. Sorry, just repeat the last one. Yeah, so I'm, I'm interested how much data you need to, to train the model to get realistic effects. For example, this face swap. So you show that you need photos of, of a person at different um, face expressions to, to then be able to, to, to fake it. Uh, so how much actually data from your experience is needed? So how many photos of a person? Well, uh, to be honest, it's more, uh, it's more easy to do with video uh, because uh, the software could extract models from video as well and create the images stuck uh, on behind if this is your question uh, but if you are using images uh, you can you can do it with uh, maybe three main images of the person which are in a different kind of perspective this is one of the most uh, important uh, how to say uh, things in order to, to create an accurate model because uh, when you have a different perspective you can see the people's face from uh, every every kind of view so i i tried with three and uh, it's working only three like one to three that's as we say yeah one okay. to three and uh, if it was actually front uh, right left of course <laughs> the three ones okay i thought it's you need like much, much more, That's okay. And with video, so what, if you have one video of a person just speaking straight to the camera, was it enough or you would need a yeah, video of people? It is enough if, if it's more than 10 seconds, I believe. Because there, there, there will be some, uh, uh, some face expressions in, in these 10 seconds. This is the most important thing in the software because uh, the, the red dots I show you, the models, they are actually gathering the, the expressions of the face and uh, compare them to another person, for example. And all of this is uh, open source, yes, as I, as I understand. Yeah, it is. <laughs> this is the most crazy part. It's all open source. Um, okay, so to, to use it, how would you estimate how much time did you need to actually start building that? Um, mm. For a good uh, technical trained person, it could take two days maybe. But uh, you would need some, how to say, some clouding experience because uh, on my PC, for example, last time my presentation fell off because my my drivers broke. My video drivers, I mean. My video card is the stuck one. From Intel's and it's not a video or something, which is uh, how to say, which is making this kind of uh, video rendering more uh, easy. So for my PC, it was a disaster. 
then I you, then I switched to Code Labs and everything was fine. Mm -hmm. And what about voice? I mean, uh, because you, you focus on video as uh, what about voice? Uh, so like changing the voice to, to sound as this, uh, this person? Well, there is uh, a different kind of software, not that one, but uh, it's, it is possible in general. Or except uh, it's possible to, to make a, a good model for recognition. This is what I saw in most of the documents. You can uh, make a good uh, voice rec recognizer model. And after that, I believe it could be very easy to switch it. Because it's the same, how say, same, um, same stack of, of um, information like in the video. But deep fake labs, I'm not sure they can do this. They're just focused on the video. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, uh, I have. Thanks for uh, presentation, Goslav. I have the following question: Is it possible to detect if video was modified by Deep Face Lab? Mm, not so easy. Uh, well, you can you can detect it uh, from. The, 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 the encoders inside it, but if you convert it with other software, uh, it could be very hard. I mean, afterwards. Okay, thank you. This is actually one of the comments which uh, it was in the promo video. It's very hard to catch deep thing. Uh, however, if you are trying to use uh, already modified video with like to, to train another video, I think you'll see some artifacts on that video. Yes, yes, you can, you will see yes because uh, the software is not perfect. I, I saw it as well. Uh, it's making mistakes, of course, and you can see it uh, in the video as well. And the model, as you mentioned, is. Uh, is how to say uh, putting some footprints in the video. Uh, okay, I, I have questions. So, uh, is it possible to continue to make some deployment to like uh, some Docker Compose or other stuff to run all this stuff in one click? Yes, it is possible. Okay, cool. Uh, do you do you want me to to create another presentation like this with more deeper knowledge about uh, the technology stack or more videos? Yeah, I think it will be interesting. I will I will actually check for the voice replacement as well. Um, great.